Namira, what's good? Hey, P. Hi. How are you guys doing? Hey, P. Good. Okay, so my first question is, how was it working on building the chemistry between you two for this film? Well, I always say on the first day I showed up and this guy said something to me that was very powerful. And he told me I don't see color. And after he said that, I was like, I guess it's on. So chemistry with us, it came quick. It came very fast. Okay. Now with these basketball stunts, did you guys do all of them yourself? Or was there like a stunt double? I don't really know how good you guys are at in well, basketball I, outside of the film. I can only speak for me, but I need to know stunt work. Same. Well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now this film had a quite a bit of interesting scenes. I saw Jack had, you know, a little car scene going on that didn't really look the safest. What, for, what if you guys can answer these questions? Which scene was the favorite for you to film? Your most favorite filming? You got it. Loved all the sex scenes. Um, loved basketball. What about you? Hmm. Same. No. Uh, um, I always bless you. Um, I always say like my first, our first day and our last day are two of my favorite scenes because I think just like you see the progression of both of us as characters and as men together in a very natural way. The fact that where we started in story and then where we ended in story is very much like our first day was our first day and our last day was our last day. And then one I'm gonna actually throw in there too was the day when we were shooting the flamethrower scene. And I remember like how many times we had to run that scene. I actually pulled my hamstring running down the alley and I had to still jump into the car. And that was one of my favorite ones because I think that was one that was a moment that brought us together. Either one of you guys can answer this question. What is your response when people speak negatively about like doing reboots and stuff? Pisses me off. I think it's more like they don't understand, right? And I understand where they might be sensitive because they don't want them, they don't want us to, to not to hold precious what they did before us. And so it's really important that they understand with this one that we took precious care to understand the story we were gonna retell. And I get it, right? Like you grew up on something and you want it to stay yours and you want it to not be, be tarnished and you wanna hope that anyone that touches it keeps it in the forefront and keeps it really relevant. And that's what we do. Um, so I get where they're coming from in the beginning. And that's why I think it's so, so impactful for people to know that it's a reboot because we take all of the things that they also hold precious and we keep those in the story as well to make them even more precious. I mean, for me, Nobody even feels that strongly. Like, everybody just needs something to say, you know? Because it's just like, oh, this is something I can comment on. Nobody actually cares or feels truly strong or emotional or is sitting at dinner, like, aggravated with their significant other about it. Nobody cares. So it's like, we don't care for real. And another thing, it's for the youth, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we hope everyone enjoys it, but I'll be honest. I know it's a classic. But it wasn't until I got the role that I went and watched it. I was like, okay, I'll watch it. Because I missed it. You know what I'm saying? It came out four years before I was born. And I'm 25 years old. So there's a ton of kids that I know have not seen that classic, amazing movie. So let's give them this story. So that's how I feel, man. Of course it has to be handled with care and we have responsibility. But geez, you know, we're just telling a story. I agree with you on that one. Thank I'm you. around the same age, and I hadn't seen it either until I got this interview. So, I'll drink um, to it. On the uh, people have people feeling strongly about stuff that you guys do and whatnot. You know, you were at the Grammys. You got this movie coming out. You just released an album, and then on top of that, like there's a lot that happens on social media, and somebody even released a diss song about you. How do you handle just like all that negative energy and a stuff? A diss song about me? For Jack. For Jack. Oh, I was. Worry for a second. I was like, why? <laughs> you know, I just take a page out of Jeremy's book and, uh, you know, I just find peace in my life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I live in Kentucky, so I get to be around my family and I get a lot of chances to be around people I grew up with. So, you know, the internet is like a contained space that you can choose whether or not you visit. So, I enjoy my time in the real world. That's what I said. Last question, this is for both of you because I think it affects both of you as an actor and as a musician. What are your thoughts on artificial intelligence and just everyone pretty much going crazy about it essentially taking over? You know, we got fake Drake songs. We got actors potentially doing scripts that were written by AI. What are your guys' thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I want to know too. 
I don't think it really affects me per se. I don't know if I want to listen to a song done by AI, but I don't know. What do you guys think? So you're more with like you're more with the idea that you want it to be, you like things to be natural, and still be like yeah. homegrown and organic. It's a good perspective. I don't know. I mean, I guess it can be discouraging, but what are you gonna do? I mean, I'm just gonna keep living. You know what I'm saying? The world is going to continue to progress in ways that may be uncomfortable. And I'm not going to kill myself, so let's just keep rocking. And Cinque, would you ever do a script that was written by AI? <laughs> He's a legend. <laughs> I know he usually plays basketball, but maybe he could write one. 